Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Today's topic is uh, teens self harm, and it might be a little bit of. Uh, not an easy subject for so many and yet it is something very important for you to hear uh, for us to discuss maybe we can have a conversation about it and for you just uh, to know what's going on um i've the reason i'm bringing this up is so many of my clients have been coming here and questioning about their teenagers. I'm getting a lot of kids and teenagers as clientele uh, in the past uh, year. So before I go further, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Lisa Bubari, and I am an award-winning clinical hypnotherapist in the Los Angeles area. So let us discuss. I have my cup of coffee, right? And uh, in order for us to talk about certain things like this, it's best to understand that this is not uh, saying that some parents are ignorant, some parents uh, are missing uh, something, but this refers to uh, injury and self-harm that we are talking about with teenagers is an injury that is done to ourself, uh, to the body, teenagers do it, on purpose. It is, it can be of a symptom of extreme emotional distress and anxiety, and it's seen mostly in young adults and teenagers. So, in a recent analysis and data for the Center of Disease Control reveals that approximately 30% of teen girls have done some kind of cutting or self-harm and approximately 10 to 12% of boys. So it's more prevalent in young girls. Why? Because young girls, I believe, have this, I need to look, have a certain look, have a certain body, and if I'm not, they compete or there is this inner voice or uh, thought that um, comes to, I'm not good enough. So when we are talking about self-harm, I put some of my logistics in here those who cut or burn or harm themselves are not necessarily attempting to suicide please understand the the difference in there it's not suicidal thoughts or anything but instead they're using a a method i call it a mechanism a way a method of self-harm that it is unhealthy um, way of coping with something. So what is it that they might be coping with? Definitely there is an emotional dis-ease. There is an uneasiness within themselves. Uh, it is, I'm not good enough. There might be some kind of an anxiety or sadness. They really don't know how to reveal it. Or, you know, there is difficult tension and emotions that they don't know how to express. It's They know there's something off. They know there is something wrong. But they just don't have the means or the opportunity or the permission. Here's the word, permission. Permission either by mom, permission by parents, permission by an authority figure or they didn't even know that they can give themselves permission to express what they are feeling so this form of communication that gets lumped in here or lumped in their heart or in their stomach we know that to be our gut 
they haven't found the way to express. So, and because it's all stored and bundled, it needs to get out. Some act it out, some become drama-like, uh, or um, it's that traumatic experience. And if it is something that feels um, hurt, you know, some people call it, is smoking harmful? Smoking is harmful. But most people who smoke are not smoking to harm themselves. But if anybody who is a smoker, when you ask them, they talk about, oh, it gives me a sense of calm. It gives me a sense of pleasure. Well, the same goes with self-harm, which is the cutting. And it starts with one thing. And while they're doing it, they are focused only on this one part. And as it cuts, it, although it hurts, the pleasure of that very moment, the concentration, because they're hurting and the hurt that comes over here, it becomes a, how I say, a double sword pleasure for the moment. It's a temporary pressure, even though it's negative. At that very moment, the hurt, the pain feels, and they come to feel something instead of feeling numb, instead of feeling as if I can't express, I don't know how to, I feel something. So this self-harm is a way of releasing a feeling of pain, tension, anxiety, and the traumatic experience. You know, for so many times I've shared as a clinical hypnotherapist what we do in order to change a habit or a behavior. We tap within the subconscious mind which stores all information from the day you were born until now. It's just like uh, this computer, right? That holds all the information or even your phone. Where's my phone? Even the phone, right? When you put someone's contact information or you store something, when it is stored, everything is in your phone. So, and then you go to your contacts to find somebody's name and you scroll maybe by the name or by the contact or a title or alphabetically until you come to that. So that's exactly what we are doing. This phone, the chip inside here, the memory bank is the same memory bank as your subconscious mind. So when you think about that, is to understand that subconscious mind that has stored everything. It is the emotions connecting to the behavior, to the habit, good, bad, right, wrong, it doesn't matter. So what we do, working with my clients, either a child or a teenager, does this make sense? That what we do is tap, allow them to get to that moment we do this technique i utilize as a timeline therapy or we go backwards in time to find the culprit the cause the moment of when it started the first time when they do any kind of a self-harm they might not consciously remember it that's why in talk therapy or in cognitive therapy, it may not come to them right away. But when we do the hypnosis, the hypnotic suggestions of going to another time and a place, we go straight into the memory bank. And as we open the file, we find the causation. And at that very moment, it's like, do you see it? Do you feel it? Do you recognize it? That's all we want them to do. 
We're not here to say or to negate anything, but for them to have an understanding. Once there is the emotional connection, they see it, they feel it, they know it, is we bring that emotion up to the surface and then that's where the therapy begins. What is it that you are feeling? What is going on? Why did we do this? Why did you do this? So as a therapist, just like a manual of a car, a therapist cannot change the client's behavior or habit or patterns. We're just like the manual. We are here to give you instructions how to do it. We are here to guide you. We are here to help you just like a self-help book. It is there to give you suggestions, techniques, tools, workbook, assignments for everything to happen the same way as a teacher in school. They cannot make a child be smart, but they can guide, enhance, and empower and inspire a child to learn to have this craving and hunger to do better, to study, to memorize, to bank it in and have this, you know, how some teachers are better than others because one teacher talks about it with inspiration. So what we do or what I do with my clients is it's not that you did bad and scolding is I understand you're doing this. But let's find out why so that if you are doing this and it's hurting and it's scarring you and you when they do it as a self punishment, not knowing how to cope, how to express, how to communicate. So if they have been scolded, if they have been hurt, then they are adding more hurt onto themselves because they don't see the inspiration or the motivation or that inner inner guide from the inside that says I am better than this let me find another way and it is very painful it's very painful that they don't see another way until there is a guide this is not about te teachers. It's not about parents. Sometimes parents don't even know it. And I'm going to get to how you can recognize, how you can recognize certain aspects of it. So allow me to say this. It can come from scratching. And if something hurts and scratches, if there is a pimple or uh, something like that, and they scratch and scratch, um, and I know, I'm sharing this, when I was a teenager, I used to do it. I would just look for imperfection on my skin. Because when I was very young, I had this uh, imperfection on my lips. And I used to be made fun of. So for years and years, I remember uh, standing in front of the mirror and saying, you know, even now, I know it's here. So with by doing the lip liner and everything, I can make it better. And it has affected uh, what I call it, my lips, the way my lips are formed or something like that. And throughout the years, um, it has gotten better. But so many come to hurt themselves because it's not perfect. But what is perfection in their mind? Not understanding that there in life there is no perfection in anything, and that is what I teach them. That is what I empower not only our teenagers, but our young adults, even adult clients who have and continued certain tendencies of doing certain things, maybe not to the harshness, and yet in different ways. So another one is like burning the skin. I know you may think it's really harsh, but they do it. And if as a young adult, a way of punishment 
they've been punished by having a cigarette burn them or something burned them and at that very moment they got attention the subconscious not, does not understand if it is good intention attention or bad attention at that very moment when this happened they got some kind of an attention and because the emotional connection of the subconscious to the reality is what you believe it and what at that moment it happens then if I burn myself I will get attention again if I cut myself even though I do it in silence even though I do it in the privacy of my room and I hide it because I don't want anyone to see it. But when they see it, they get some kind of an attention. So the harsh objects, the hitting and punching themselves to a wall, the cutting or even the piercing of the skin when it comes outside of the norm and you may say but what is norm what is norm right certain things are norm beyond that it becomes some turn around and say it's my body it is my choice what i do it is true so but the fact of is it for beauty or is it for harm and the belief system that comes with that is when they come and say I hate myself or I hate doing this and I want to stop or the parents bring it in and that is the emotional connection to the behavior and to the habit that it's no longer a habit has become part of a behavior part of their routine part of their pattern we unravel the pattern and find and give them tools and techniques for a healthier way of coping with stressors with their tension with their anxiety so another one is picking at their scab wounds and or here's something that most people see it but don't recognize it is eating disorder you know my book the stand up to slim down even though it is about weight it's managing weight but the work that it's in there the the, the workbook that is questions that is being asked about food eating eating habits environment your surroundings from the time that you were a child in your house in front of tv or being ignored about food or you can have anything you were forced to eat or you didn't have enough to eat or when you ate i had a client and and I want to share about something and you might say this is harsh and yet it's not about judging anyone it's about understanding a child's mentality because when we grow up and this client of mine was 32 years old I looked at her saw beauty like a, a princess like she could be Miss Universe Mrs. Universe and when she was very young her parents were like a Barbie mom beautiful blonde and very thin very well liked successful high achiever father high achiever in CEO position and everything like Ken and the perfection home the perfection everything and she had to compete within them herself and she was a cheerleader because she was beautiful she loved to be social and everything and her grades she had to study 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 because in her mind i'm not as good as my parents 
but her parents, because of the way they ate and everything, she felt like, I can't eat the way they want to. So she would always feel hungry, hungry, emotional hunger, and yet physical hunger. So even though she didn't eat at home, she would get to school into her last years in, in high school and everything. And she would open trash cans and find something that someone threw away that it was like a scone, like a donut or something and just eat that. The emotional hunger of, I want something that has sweet that I'm not allowed to have. All that worked to a point that at age 32, everything she ate, she would go and throw up even to that age. And it's not that she was I remember this so vividly. She didn't come in for herself. She came in because she saw her child, her son, was doing the same thing. She caught her son doing the same thing. And that's when the lights went on and her daughter, she started giving everything to the daughter, but the son was refraining. So this entire month's mindset of where is this coming from? She had forgotten how she was at, uh, when she was in school and where it came from. So to change and help her children. So she started her own therapy understanding it oh my god within two months she felt healthier the son felt healthier the daughter felt healthier the entire home the household uh the intention of what is food how we eat uh, the family time and everything started changing and within a few months just few months they said there was magnificent incredible changes and healthier way of being and his son started soaring in school and education and his grades went up so when we're talking about that a lot of parents have an understanding what teens go through and they want to correct it so therapy is one of the ways to do it find a therapist um, I work with a lot of children because I work with anxiety as a certified domestic abuse consultant. I can also see the patterns in that tapping into the subconscious mind and delve deeper into that level. It is a faster way by all means, go to a psychologist, find a child therapist. And if you want to. I, I also offer free consultations for 15 minutes. You can also reach out to me, but find help to help your loved ones. There is another book that uh, I recommend. It is called, what is it called? Okay, Just As You Are, and the author is Michael Skin. And the title is Just As You Are. It is for confidence building for teenagers. It is absolutely wonderful. It is a good read. Um, understanding. I hope this is all making sense for you. When they are doing this, they're not doing it to harm themselves, even though it is harming. They're doing it to feel something. And and when this feels good, they do it here, they do it here, they do it here. Sometimes they cut under their armpits, they cut under their toe, they cut under their feet, they cut certain on the stomach, they cut and harm and cut into or scratch into the scabs, places that most people will not see 
because it is such a deep, hurtful, joyful, you may not understand it, but it is. And they cut until they see blood, and then they stop until the next time. So the voice in their head says something like, I'm a loser. I won't make friends. No one sees me. No one hears me. I'm not good enough. I'm already being blamed. I feel shame. Who cares if I hurt myself? They're already doing it. So the voice in the head is one of the things that we shift. We also shift the behaviors and the emotional connection to what they do. So what I recommend is treatment for the self-injury is finding the root cause of the destructive behavior. Again, I'm emphasizing it's not that they intend to su uh, for a suicide. It is not suicidal. It is not mental disease, but condition. And the condition, if it gets worse, it may lead up to worse things, but be more aware Tent attentive, find ways to communicate, and even dialectical behavioral therapy, which is DBT, is another way, actually, I'm studying to be certified in that as well. Hypnotherapy, hypnosis is one of the best ways that I recommend, of course, and again, cognitive, the CBT, cognitive therapy, is very powerful um so nice to hear your live presentation hi ron how are you thank you hi Sedo john thank you for being here so today's message again is i see so many of my clients come in wanting to be healthier stronger and better and find ways to communicate with their teenagers and they bring their children and teenagers here who are suffering with, um, they think, it, they say it is a depression, it is a sadness, it is internal dialogues that they don't know how to communicate and they go into self-harm. So I hope today's message was beneficial to you or if it is resonating with you, or if you know someone, by all means, I am here. My intention, my goal, my mission is to help those who want to make a change within themselves. That's what heal within is. It's healing from the inside. No one can make you happy. Because when someone says, I want to be happy, I say, what is happy? Well, to be liked, to go, to do things, those are actions from the outside. But what we truly mean is to find inner peace and joy. Joy from the inside. When we feel joy, when we feel peace, and we feel good about who we are, then we can go and be happy. That's the action with something else. Be happy doing this. Be happy doing that. Being happy means I have joy within myself. And that's why I can be happy. So, great talk. Thank you. You have answered some of my questions from my own teen years. You are so welcome. Again, heal within. That's where transformation begins. 
standing up for who you are, showing up for who you are, and learning how to speak up the things that are bundled inside. I hope today's message was beneficial and enlightening and hopefully inspirational. My name is Lisa, and until next week, I bid you goodbye, wish you the best for this week, and blessed Easter Sunday for those of you who are celebrating, and Ramadan for those who are celebrating at this time. And until next week, God bless you, and may the universal light surround you. And if you like this, Thank you share it, here. subscribe, so and go to YouTube, the, the and you'll see the rest of all my right podcasts. Here. And if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.